Greetings, fellow action figure connoisseurs, and welcome to another episode of Digital Caveman Presents Marvel Monday. I, as always, am your host, the Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting you with the Uncanny X-Men Retro Carded Apocalypse. Now let's get into it. Let's begin our reign of immortal evil with a look at the packaging. And here we have, because it's such a long way away from me, I had to back my camera way up to get this big old card. But here we go, the Marvel Comics logo from the 90s, which is, this is my favorite Marvel Comics logo. And then a couple of heads like they used to do in the uh, corner of the upper corner of the comic books. We got Rogue, Wolverine, Gambit, and Storm. Then some nice artwork of Apocalypse Ancient Evil. And there it is in some other languages that I don't speak. Warning! Don't stick things in your pie hole that don't belong there. Four and up, assortment number, the Uncanny X-Men. And of course, this Apocalypse is more in the animated colors, maybe. But this is kind of really what I remember him looking like in the comic books during the late 80s and early 90s when he first appeared uh, in those uh, Walt Simonson stories. Uh, here we have Hasbro print. And then, you know, it's a blister card. It's nicely blistered. And it does have that dual layered cardboard folded. I don't, I'm not sure how they do it, but the edges of the bubble here are inside the cardboard and then in the bottom you can see there's a sheet of paper in there and here on the back new Marvel logo Uncanny X-Men line drawing of Apocalypse but it doesn't show you can change his hands or install hoses or whatever and then a nice product shot which is most likely a render but it, it might not be Marvel's Apocalypse attention don't stick things in your French pie hole that don't belong there. And then here we have warning attention, Achtung! Don't stick things that don't belong in any language pie hole. Don't give it to the babies. It's recycled. Small, fine, legalese, made in China print symbols. I'm not going to learn and a barcode. And then let's look and see what it says here. Look upon the future and tremble. He is Apocalypse, the world's most powerful mutant, and from the ashes of our world, he will build a better one. And then there it is in some other languages and some more Hasbro print. That, my friends, is a look at this humongous packaging. Let's take a look at the figure and his accessories. And we'll start with the accessories. And here we have handy dandy tweezers. And we'll start with the smallest accessories. We have these two little, or there's two of these little blast effects uh, that I think originally came with the MCU Black Widow movie deluxe Black Widow. I could be wrong, but that's... That's about the time I remember these coming out. Uh, might not have seen them in these colors before. And you can see it's got a little post on the back of it to plug into. Ports on whatever you may be porting them into. Here we have an extra set of hands, which are fists. And I believe these came just like these. Uh, originally from the 80th anniversary Colossus and Juggernaut 2 pack. These were Colossus's hands. They are on an in and out hinge. And they are nicely detailed. These are also the hands that came on the Apocalypse build a figure. And so these may originally be his. I, I cannot remember if that build a figure came first or the 80th anniversary two pack of Colossus and Juggernaut came first but anyway these are these hands have been used before and again this was exactly the same fist in and out hinge well it's not exactly the same it's the opposite side 
And then here we have his extra head, and look at those eyes. They, they almost look like they're glowing. And then not lots of paint detail in there from the inkjet face printing technology that Hasbro's using now. I have to say, it's just a nice looking evil kinda I'm not happy about something face. I'm displeased. And next up we have a blast effect, which of course we have seen this before ever since 80th anniversary Iron Man. Or maybe it was out before that. I'm not sure. That's the first one that kind of springs up to mind that started using this blast effect. And of course, we've had countless Iron Mans come with them since. In fact, we've had countless other characters come with these as well since then. And might even have seen this color before. I'm not sure. Then the last accessory we have is his hand cannon or arm cannon whatever you want to call it. It does have lots of nice molded detail in there, and it does have a few paint apps as well to just help it look cool as hell. Right here it's got a port for the hoses that come around from the back, or the cables, whatever you want to call it. And then these two little ports right here is where the smaller blast effects go. And then you can plug the larger one into one of these larger ports. Uh, you can see on the inside there is a peg where it connects up to his hand. And just all around kind of cool looking. Now let's take a look at the figure himself. And again, pretty much the same paint detailing on the head and it looks rather nice the only difference is you know this is a super unhappy grimace like ah, I'm super angry but that same paint for the eyes and I can really tell you the the camera and the lights and stuff really are not doing those eyes justice they look much, much better in person. And then, of course, we've got his little collar here. And I think this is the paint app. And pretty much the whole thing is molded in color. Like all this, the kneecap, the boot, the foot, the legs. This paint app right here, the A on his belt. And then I'm not sure which part of this is the paint paint app but this piece right here is just a little like sleeve that once the hands come off you can remove this because you have to in order to put the hand cannon on and just nice details throughout and like I said this really uh, or did I say I don't know but this is how I remember him looking in the comics even though I know this is more supposed to be more animated colors but this really this really hits classic for me from the comics like when Walt Simonson was drawing X-Factor and Apocalypse made his first full appearance and this is this is what I think of when I think of Apocalypse this version of the character well, let's take a look at his articulation he can look up that high and you can look down that low, and as you can see right here, there's the hinge in the neck. So this is that classic Hasbro Marvel Legends hinge and ball for the head. And it's like, oh, I smell something really bad, so I'm going to hide my face. And the head would do a full 360 degree full exorcist if this collar were not in the way. But since it is, every time you try to turn his head all the way around, it just pops off. So... Does he have chicken neck? No, no, no real chicken neck. He does have a good bit of waggle in there, though. And, you know, he can turn that far without popping off. and you know, He can turn that far without popping off. So that's, that's pretty good. Now, I will say, I like the look of these shoulder doodads. 
but they do kind of get in the way a little bit. So, as you can see there, now the arm will do a full 360 degree rotation, but because of this cord, you know, it kind of messes that up. So let's just take that off for a second, and it just ports right in, in there. And this is what it looks like on the inside. You can see it's got just a little bit of a ring in there to help it stay into place. Now he does have a cut here at the upper bicep, and it does give you a full 360 degree rotation. Now the shoulder, at the shoulder, arm comes out to mm, not even really close to 90 degrees. But that's how much bend you get out of the shoulder. And then we've covered this rotation. At the elbow, he does have a single hinge. And with this in place, only gives you about that much of a bend. And it's not much better with this piece off. At the wrist, 360 degree rotation on an in and out hinge. And in and out hinge on the other hand as well. Then we do have that classic Marvel Legends... Uh, Hasbro ab crunch hinge and that will allow him to bend backwards that far and crunch forward that far so that's pretty good range of motion for such a big dude now it's on there's a cut here at the waist so there's no no ball swivel there at all but he will do a full 360 degree rotation there, but the belt does get in the way just a little bit. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and... Ah, now I got hoses coming off everywhere. There we go. Get that hose hooked back up. Now let's talk about the hips. He'll give you that much range of the splits, which isn't bad. He can kick forward approximately 90 degrees maybe a little bit less uh, he can take a step back it looks like and that's about it for back cut here at the upper thigh for a 360 degree rotation double hinged pinned knee give you that much bend and then he has this like ball joint hinge at the ankle And it will tilt down that far. It does tilt up slightly. And forward facing pin for rocker. And then um, the hoses, I forgot to talk about the hoses. Uh, as far as they, you know, we looked at where they, how they hook in here. And it's pretty much the same here. And they hook into this belt, not directly into the figure. And you know, it's got that same ring around it to kind of help it stay installed and let's look at the hand cannon real quick the first thing you want to do is pop the hand off undo the hose then slide the sleeve off then just port the cannon into place till you hear it click or feel it click, it might be either one. And then the hose just ports into the bottom here. Maybe. There it goes. So it's a little bit of a tight fit. So there's how he looks using his arm or hand cannon because of his shape shifting ability. And then the two little blast effects, again, these small holes on the side here, they just kind of port into there. And it's a little bit of a tight fit too, and that's fine because that keeps them from falling out. Now, the big one won't really port into this bottom with those two in place. I guess you could, but it's going to bend some stuff. And we really don't want to do that because over time it will stay in that compromised position so just port it in the higher of the two barrels so there you go apocalypse using his arm cannon to decimate the x-men
That, my friends, is a look at the figure and his accessories. It's time for my favorite part of a review, comparisons. And here we have the new Hasbro Retro Carded Apocalypse with the original Toy Biz Marvel Legends Apocalypse. And as you can see, the Toy Biz one does have a bit more detail in it, but the Hasbro one actually, to me, looks much more classic. And that's the way I like it. Here we have the Retro Carded Apocalypse with the Build-A-Figure Apocalypse from a few years ago. And as you can see, the Build-A-Figure is a much more modern take on the character with the darker colors and the more detailed armbands and accoutrement. And here's that Retro Carded Apocalypse, again, because this is its review, with the Caliban Build-A-Figure, a former Morlock, who Apocalypse used his evil powers of genetics, or his evil knowledge of genetics, rather, to mutate Caliban further from his Morlock existence into one of Apocalypse's four horsemen, which I believe he was Death, and he was also his Hound. Here's Apocalypse with another of his horsemen, or former horsemen, rather. The Horseman of Death, or the Angel of Death, the Archangel. Who made his first appearance? I believe it was in X-Factor number 25 during the Fall of the Mutant storyline. Here's Apocalypse with another one of his lackeys, Mr. Sinister. And one of his arch nemesis, nemesi, nemesises, Cyclops, also known as Scott Summers, in his X Factor uniform. One of his X Factor uniforms, anyway. And this is the retro carded. Cyclops, and I forget which Build-A-Figure wave Mr. Sinister comes from. Here we have Apocalypse with making his cameo appearance, Stan the Man Lee, who is also from the Marvel Legends series, of course. And let's see how he compares up with other lines, and we'll start that off with the G.I. Joe Classified series Hasbro Pulse Exclusive Regal Variant Cobra Commander. Here we have Apocalypse with from Star Wars The Black Series Archive Edition 501st Legion Clone Trooper and for a 7 inch comparison from McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse line, Three Jokers, The Joker, The Clown. For final thoughts on the Marvel Legends retro carded X-Men Apocalypse Ancient Evil I have to say this is the Apocalypse I wanted when they did the Build-A-Figure he's much more of the classic aesthetic 
and even though it might be meant more for the cartoon colors, this is how I think of Apocalypse when I think of him from, you know, reading the 80s, late 80s and early 90s issues of X Factor and X Men. And I have to say, it's a really good figure. There is some reuse, like, you know, most of the body is reused. I think the, the blue piece on the torso may be a glued on overlay. I'm not 100% sure. They may have just uh, retooled the build a figures chest here a little bit, or it may be some, from something entirely else that I'm not thinking of. Um, the shoulder pad doodads are maybe a little bit on the big side. They do get in the way just a little bit, but it's it, it's not that bad. Uh, the addition of the hand cannon and the blast effects, I think, is a nice touch because I do remember there were times when he did turn his arm into a weapon sometimes it was a gun sometimes he turned it into a shield but anyway that's a, that's a nice accessory addition and you know I'm, I'm glad that they did do that we do got the or we do have the alternate head which so he doesn't have to be like straining all the time uh, he can just be, you know, plainly unhappy. And the articulation is pretty, pretty much what you would expect on any Build-A-Figure, pretty much. The single elbows and, you know, the double knees, but it, it, that's not here or there. He moves like... You know, he moves like he should. I don't I don't think he needs that extra hinge in the elbow. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have one, but you know, for this figure himself, it's really not a hundred percent necessary. Now, I think his collar, they maybe could have done it just a tad bit shorter, but even the way that it exists now is fine. I like it. Very classic. That does it for the review. I hope that you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very, very much for supporting this channel through viewing. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews or just help the channel out further or both, that's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. That's a wrap, folks. I'll see you next time.